All right, so for part two is where we start to shift gears into talking about, I want to focus now on creating a mobile app. And I can say it generically that way, a mobile app, because our project will be a project that will be able to be uh, sold or given away on Google Play, sold or given away on Apple iTunes App Store, or sold or given away on the Microsoft App Store. We'll be able to sell or give away our app on all the app stores. So we're going to create a cross-platform mobile app, not just an Android app. But as again I've said, we need to focus on Android because uh, we cannot do uh, an, um, iOS app development unless we're on a Mac, unless we talk about virtualization and all that complex stuff. So for all intents and purposes, we're on Windows, so we're going to be focusing on Android. Go ahead and open up your web browser. And let's go to the website developer.android.com. Developer.android.com. Remember to spell it correctly. Developer.android.com. This is the main portal where we would look up all of the straight from the horse's mouth information about creating an Android specific app. We would need to go over to developer.apple.com to look up all of the specific information to create an app for iOS devices. And we would go over to developer.windows.com to look up all the specific information to develop an app specifically for the Windows ecosystem. Uh, looking at this page here, they're going on about Android N, the latest version, which is codenamed Nougat, Android Nougat, uh, the latest version. It's in beta right now. People can download it and play with it, and then it'll eventually be the official latest version of Android very soon. Um, over on this side here, at the very top, we've got Design, Develop, Distribute. Those are the three big pillars basically on any app. You have to design it. What does it look like? How will it behave? What's its information architecture? Things that we talked about last month. Then we've got develop. Well, we need to program it. What's the code that'll let me do what I had in mind? Then when it's all done, we need to distribute it. We need to publish it somewhere. So there's lots and lots of reams of documentation on that on all of those processes on those three links. We will be referring to some of the things throughout the course on this site, but again, we're creating a cross-platform app. So some of the things we would see here wouldn't quite apply to an iOS app, or a Windows app, or a Blackberry app, etc. What we get out of the developer portal also is the developer console. Eventually we'll look at this. This is where we log in to distribute our app. This is where we log in to see how many app downloads do we have, how much money are we making from our app, how many crashes has our app encountered. There's a developer's console. Same thing over on the app, uh, the iOS side, the Windows side, the Amazon side. They've all got their sort of portal. This is going to go on to tell you what's what's so great about developing for Android. And again, you don't have to go to it, but over at developer.apple.com, it would be the same sort of thing. They've all got an they've all got a developer's portal. But the thing, of course, is we would need to know the language of each individual platform. And what we're going to do is be cross-platform. We want to target all the, all the platforms at once. So we'll be returning to this site. But what we want to do is now go over to cordova.apache.org. Cordova with a V as in Victor, not B as in boy. Cordova. Dot apache.org Cordova.apache.org 
cordova.apache.org. Mobile apps with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript target multiple platforms with one code base, free and open source. So on our desktop, we have Android Studio, which we're not going to use. That would be the software that we would use to only target Android devices. And it's here, and we can use it, and I think other classes on this campus teach it. But we want to be cross-platform, so we're going to focus on Cordova, and that's already installed as well. <coughs> the Get Started Guide, the documentation, it's all here. We're going to be referring to it often. This is where we're going to spend more time over instead of over at developer.android or apple.android. Um, the benefits, of course, is reusable code. It'll work on all the platforms, access native device a APIs, basically meaning we're going to be able to write a little bit of JavaScript to access the camera feature of a device. And Cordova basically will translate that JavaScript to the appropriate Java for uh, Android, the appropriate Objective-C for iOS, the appropriate C-sharp for Windows. We'll just write Java, JavaScript, JavaScript. And Cordova will translate it to all the necessary languages behind the scenes. People, people often ask right away then, well, what sort of uh, performance issues are there if there's a middleman and all of that? Honestly, there are. Uh, but depending on the kind of app you're creating, if you're creating a, a fast-paced, intense kind of game, perhaps the Cordova middleman might be a noticeable um, performance hit. It's always going to be better to be writing directly native languages when you're getting advanced with, ga uh, with games that have a lot of graphics and sound and, and all of that. It's always going to be read it better to write your app that way. But you're going to need to learn three big languages if you want to target your game to all the platforms. And from what I've read, and I keep up to date with this stuff, it seems that people, developers, app developers, are going to make it, are going to get a little bit more rich if they focus on iPhone development. It seems, from the studies that I read, not to put anyone down, but it seems that Android lovers, and I'm one of them, are a little less prone to buy Android apps, whereas it seems that iOS lovers are a little bit more prone to spend that 99 cents. Even 99 cents is hard to spend sometimes. So from what I've read, you're going to make a little bit more profits off of iOS people. So if we use some platform like this and we can target all the platforms, what do we have to lose? We're going to use a, a, a code base that is applicable to all. Any sort of performance hits, unless you're doing a very intense kind of app, are negligible. We'll be able to access all the features of the device. The way we actually use it, because everyone's trying to do this the best way, cross-platform development. Cordova is not the only way. Uh, Xamarin was also is another big name in this space, and other ones. So everyone's trying to create the perfect suite so that your code is reusable throughout all your devices. This is one way. If we were using something like Android Studio, or Xcode, or Visual Studio, or Eclipse and such, we have a nice pretty interface where we can go to File Menu and do this, and click on this button and drag and drop. We have a nice development software. We are going to use Cordova, and it's going to rely on what many modern web and app developers are using now, a command prompt. Raise your hand if you know what that means, command prompt. All right, do you know what perhaps as a terminal? Raise your hand if you know what a terminal means. This is what it is. Go ahead and click on your start menu, and start typing command. And when your program on the top says command prompt, click on it. So launch the command prompt app. This is what we're going to use extensively. Some of us remember this as DOS, disk operating system. We're going to be 
we're going to be here. We're going to be typing commands here. Not with a pretty interface, not with drag and drop buttons. We're going to be in the command prompt. Um, some of us have experience with this. Um, raise your hand if you've ever used the command prompt before. Okay, when was the last time you used the command prompt? Uh, Any time in the last year. Has anyone used the command prompt in the last year? Three people. How many of you have used it in the last ten years? More people. So this was the dominant operating system, you know, 10, 15 years ago or more. You would type a command, you know, copy file one to file two. That's drag and drop. If I'm dragging one file to another, this is the way that it was done back then. Copy file one to file two. So we're going to be using various commands, and we're only going to need to know like six commands. We don't need to know the whole DOS command prompt system. Because we're going to see that we're going to have something like Cordova create my app. And it creates the app. We're going to type Cordova add platform. And we will create the Android version. Cordova add platform iOS. It will add the iPhone version. We'll be able to type a few simple commands. And then Cordova run. We're going to run the project. And then it's going to run right on our device. So we're going to use the command prompt, also known as the terminal, to execute some of our basic commands. We're going to see that it's not going to be difficult. It might be complicated, but not difficult. I'm going to have handouts for you that have all of this. We're going to get there. We're going to have handouts that help you do it all. And you're going to see it's going to be so much easier then waiting for, you know how if you use Eclipse, you know, launching that takes a little while. If you use Android Studio, simply launching it takes a little while. If you use Xcode, if you use Visual Studio, simply turning it on takes a little while. Well, here with the command prompt, it pops open in a, in a snap, and then we're going to type commands. Don't type anything yet, but we're going to type something like Cordova run Android. Then we're going to run our Android project. Instead of going to the menu, clicking on this, creating a development profile and all of that stuff, we're just going to run some basic commands. Uh, this needs some setup, and it's all done for our computers here, no problem. But all of the setup and documentation, this, is, this works on Windows, this works on Mac, it works, Mac, it works on Linux. You see here, it, it su supports all the platforms. Uh, PhoneGap, Ionic, all of these things, Taco, Visual Studio, there's a version for Visual Studio, and all of this. Here's a showcase of all of this stuff, real apps from the real app store, etc., etc. So, this is a very cool project. It's open source, meaning you can contribute to it. You find a bug, you put a bug report, it'll get fixed, and you'll help the community. Um, while we've got the command prompt open, Again, I'm going to have handouts. I'm going to just do this quickly for the moment to show you what we're in for. Then we'll do it slowly. Everyone should be at the command prompt here. If you closed it, go back to start and type command and launch command prompt. There are various versions of Cordova. We're using the TACO version, T-A-C-O. Go ahead and do this. Type TACO create my project. Taco space create space my project. My project has no spaces there, everything's lowercase. Type this, then press enter. We're going to get used to it. Nothing happens until you press enter. And if there's a problem, it'll usually tell you. If there's no problem, it might not tell you. The command prompt is very Stoic. Taco space create space my project. Notice no space on my project. Press enter. Just gonna think for a moment. It might take a little bit longer. It might go very quickly like this. This is gonna depend on a few things. It's gonna give us a bunch of feedback. Just ignore that for the moment. Eventually when you type this, It'll take you back to the command prompt. If anything looks like an error, 
just wait one moment. So we did taco create my project. When the little cursor comes back blinking here, type cd space my project. Again, I'll explain what we're doing in just a moment. I want to show you in general this. Type cd space my project, press enter. This should tell you you're in my project. Type taco plat space platform space add space Android. Press enter. Taco space platform space add space Android. Enter. Give you some feedback, adding platform, Android, etc., etc. I see something there that said Cordova. And eventually, you should get a green success right here. Eventually, it takes you back to the command prompt, the little blinking cursor. Now, type taco emulate Android. Taco space emulate space Android space. Press enter. Sit back. What you'll see is some processing, and then you will see an Android emulator pop up on your screen. And then this project we just created. Let me pause here. If you missed anything, call me over. Trouble? Yes, I know I went through it quickly, but anyone having any trouble? How long is it?
All right, everyone. So, if it worked, if this worked after typing these archaic, these arcane commands, not archaic, arcane commands, if this worked, what you should get is maybe a new pop up window, but then a virtual Android device, an AVD, an Android virtual device. And this, mine says, Apache Cordova device ready. This is my Android app. Briefly, what we did with these commands, again, I'm going to give you a handout that explains all of these things. But we created, when I did, when we did taco create my project, we created a brand new project. It was a shell of a project, which could have then evolved into an Android project, iPhone project, etc. So we created a basic shell. We used taco. The documentation on cordova.apache.com said type cordova create project. Well, taco is equivalent to cordova. We'll see why we're using it in a moment. But we did taco create my project, and a project was created. Then success, etc. Then we did cd my project. <coughs> we were at a certain we were in a certain folder we created the my project project which was a folder we did cd change directory we went into the folder that would be like double clicking the folder we have to go into the folder cd my project we went into the folder it shows here now you're in the folder my project then we did taco platform add android we added then further the code that will convert this shell of a project into an android project so I thought about it for a moment and it said, okay, we're adding Android, etc. Success. Then we did taco emulate Android. We said, we've got a project, it's got the Android features, let's emulate it. Let's run it in an emulator, in a simulated Android environment. So I thought about it a while, then it opened up the emulator in a separate little window right here, and then it, it opened up. So that's the testing project, the basic shell of the project from step one. Now we're running it in an, in an Android device. And this device here, notice on the side here we've got, hey, rotate it. And it's going to rotate. Rotate it back. We've got a little camera button and so forth. This is like an Android device. It's like the one I've got right here. I've got the back arrow, the home screen, the app screen. If I tap my home screen button, just like here, this will take me home. Uh, hopefully it'll take you home. Mine's going to behave a little bit different than yours, unfortunately, but you should be able to click that little home button, and it should hopefully take you back to the home screen. If you tap and hold it, you can ask Google, just like a real one here, if you tap and hold your home button. Cancel that. You can see running apps. You can go back. Anyway, again, mine is perhaps going to behave a little bit different than yours, unfortunately. But this is a this is a device. Let me see if I can make it go back to my home screen. Yeah. So hey, that looks like my phone right here. Well, I have this Motorola phone, which is the most generic Android skin. And this is a generic Android device. Look at that. There's a camera app 
web browser phone. You won't be able to make a real phone call. You can't, can't crank call anyone. Um, though we've got these things, apps. Click on that little app drawer. Apps. I can tap it here on my real device. Now these are not connected at all, but I've got my my device with with my apps right here. There's apps right there. This is the, the this is the app we just created together right here. Hello Taco. We didn't specify any details, app icon, specifically app name or anything, but it's right there installed. I can play with all of these to some degree, calendar and so forth. I can click on that app and it comes up again. So we've got a virtual device. You don't need to have an Android device to be in this class. You can use the emulator like this. This is going to be better, it's going to be more responsive and accurate and such. This might not be as fast as a real device, but it'll get the job done. And uh, we would have something similar for the iPhone, for the Windows phone, etc. If you go back let me try to move this off to the side for a moment. If I go back to my command prompt here, type taco platform, simply like that. Taco, taco space platform, press enter. Earlier we did taco platform add Android. If we do taco platform, this will tell you our project has installed the Android code. And we have the ability to add, furthermore, the Amazon Fire OS code, the BlackBerry code, browser, Firefox, WebOS, Windows, blah, blah, blah. We have a variety of other platforms you can add to this project. And then now create a, a Windows project out of the same basic code. Do you notice any missing? Yeah. Which one? Apple, there's no iOS. Although, Taco Platform add iOS. If we were on a Mac, we do that. And then we add the iPhone code base to it. Whatever our basic project is, which is what we worked on last month, could then be converted to all of these platforms. So it's kind of going to add it, but it's not really going to work because we don't have all of the underlying software. So don't try this. But here, this would be if I had a fully set up environment, Taco Platform at iOS. Oh, I've got, I've got an iOS device. And then Taco Emulate iOS. Don't do this again. This is not going to work. We don't have, see, failed. We don't have the requisite software to get this to work. And again, the requisite software, unfortunately, also means requisite hardware. We also need to have a real Mac, basically, to do iOS development. So it fails at this point, because it says, you're not on a Mac, so then it fails. Let's do one more here. Let's do <coughs> taco platform <coughs> add browser, taco space platform space add space browser enter we can do this one let's try it. let's try this one taco platform add browser press enter we will process that for a bit it says it's adding the browser code base it's giving us this different feedback success you notice here that there are these quick tips. Let's do taco run browser. Again, I'll have a handout with all of these handy commands for you very soon. Taco run browser. Taco Run Browser or Taco, Taco Emulate Browser. Hey, it opened up in the web browser. Specifically, which web browser? Chrome. Google Chrome. We're running Google Android uh, on Google Chrome. So here we're running our project 
in a web browser, remember with with Google Chrome we can press F12 on the keyboard and hit the hit the device uh, toggle device toolbar. Set it to a Galaxy. Here's another way to test our Android projects, our our iOS projects in the web browser in the Android emulator. It's all coming from the same code base, but here's a way for me to test it in my web browser to, to quickly see my uh, console output and such. We'll be able to check console output and debugging and all of that for our, our device, yes, real or virtual. But we're going to see that with a couple of commands, we'll be able to create projects, add platforms, emulate or run them. Later on, we will, we will learn the way about, well, I want to plug in my, my phone and I want that app to show up on my real phone. We'll be able to do that, but we need some setup, so don't get too far ahead. So this is the general concept from backing up. We're using Taco, which is a variation of Cordova, to be able to write a few simple commands to create an app for every platform. What you need to bring to the table is some sort of web project. That's what we spent all last month with. Working on jQuery Mobile, working on HTML, CSS, JavaScript to create that web project from last month. We're going to take that, basically we're going to drop it into this project shell and keep working on it so that then that project from last month will be able to access the camera, the accelerometer, the altimeter, whatever features of your device, vibration, sound, rotation of your screen, and uh, voice feedback, and QR code reader, and Bluetooth, and all of that stuff that a real app cannot access, but our Taco-powered apps will be able to access. Taco is like a wrapper that goes around our web projects to be able to give them access to all of the device APIs. We mentioned APIs last month. We mentioned the Google API. How can I tap into Google's engine? How can I tap into Google software? We have device APIs. Write some JavaScript to be able to access the camera in any language. Android, Java, iOS, Objective-C, Windows, C-sharp. Just write some Java and Taco will convert it, basically. This is the big idea then about this class. Any any questions so far? Yes. You know, in the real world, I guess if you want to class cross platforms, I think you can enjoy it in iOS. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you definitely want to copy the code between both platforms in order to do something. And if you make a change in one, you have to do the same thing on the other one. Yeah, uh, exactly. That's what I was saying earlier, that if I had created my my app focused on Java for Android, I would have to copy and paste, and actually not really even copy and paste, rewrite it, because the Java command that makes the camera activate for Android is different than the Objective-C command to activate the camera on iPhone. What we're doing is using one project, one folder, all HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That will then get converted into the appropriate language for all the platforms. So we just have to edit the original HTML or CSS or JavaScript. In Cordova, Taco will convert it to all the platforms. That's all the point of all this uh, framework. Just one moment. Did, did that answer your question? Do you, do you still have to copy it? No. 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 You don't copy it. No. You use the original structure of this code and then it will convert it all for you. You don't have to copy, you don't have to maintain two different folders for each platform. It's one folder, all your code is there, and Cordova is in charge of converting it to all of the platforms. Now, if you tweak like an HTML document, you still have to copy it over, right? No. What, like, since you can't run Taco at platform iOS, mm -hmm. you have to copy the code to a Mac, right? Well, if you're doing it all on a Mac, right, you're on a Mac, so on the Mac you're going to use the one main code to then do taco add 
iOS, Taco, and Android. You can do Android on a Mac. That's not a problem. But you have to do iOS on a Mac. On the Mac, that's the one that's a little bit more universal, actually. You can target Android and iPhone apps on a Mac. On Windows, you can target Windows and Android apps, but not iOS. On a Mac, you can target Android and iOS, but not Windows. On the Mac, would it be Android Studio as well? Yes, yes, you can use Android Studio on a Mac as well, yeah. There's a question here first. There's one moment. Armin? Did I see your hand? No? Okay, yes. So the application name is Taco. Can you change it to other names? Definitely. We did it very quickly. We just did Taco Create My Project. At that stage, we could have added some more options to. That's the default. That's the default. So yep. Exactly, and we will. We don't want our project to be called Hello Taco. We want our project to be called Victor's Amazing App. You know, we want a real name for our project. We will be able to do that definitely, either at the moment that we create the project or later by editing some config files. So yes, we'll be able to. And if you notice, the icon of our app is also the generic code of our mascot. I don't want that. I want my icon that I designed in Photoshop. We will be able to edit all of that, and it'll work for all of the devices. Any other general? Questions? All right, if you go go to your web browser and go to phonegap.com. So people often hear, I think what has more fame is PhoneGap. But that's just a variation of Cordova. And Taco is a variation of Cordova. This is Adobe's version of Cordova. Adobe, of course, that little company that owns Photoshop and Flash and InDesign and After Effects and Dreamweaver, blah, blah, blah. They've also got PhoneGap. They've also got their version of Cordova. So over at cordova.apache.org, that's that's like the main parent of this project and then one offshoot is Adobe's version oftentimes when you look up help or documentation you will see people saying type phone gap platform add iOS well we typed taco platform add iOS it's just different versions to do the same thing there's different reasons why there's different versions. Adobe's version, um, the big thing about them is that they want to solve that problem about I'm on a Windows computer and I still want to target the Mac and I don't have the money to buy a Mac. Adobe has a service, Adobe Build, where they will convert your project to all the platforms including the Mac. I believe they give you one free conversion, one free app. If I'm going to make 10 apps in my lifetime and I want to target it to all of the platforms, including Mac, then I have to pay Adobe for their license or their system to be able to have more than one app in their system. Um, basically, they're going to take my code, convert it to all the platforms, and then I start to publish it on the Apple App Store and such. Looking briefly at products, uh, where can we see it? Uh, PhoneGap versus versus Cordova. What is it? it? Goes on to tell you Adobe's version also has a beta version of a PhoneGap desktop app. Instead of typing it in the command prompt like we've been doing, Adobe's creating a nice drag and drop safe interface version. It's still in beta. Last time I saw it. And then they've got their PhoneGap build, which is their big money maker. And PhoneGap build is basically take the pain out of compiling, take your code, give it to us, and we'll convert it to all the platforms. First one's free, and then after that, there's some amount of payment. Ten dollars a month to be able to create 25 different apps. If you get an Adobe ID, I think it might be included in that price. 
but that's how Adobe is monetizing this open source software. We, we use Cordova, the totally free version, but it's all up to us. We download the software, we set it up, we run the command, we need to be on a Mac to target a, uh, iOS. We do uh, phone uh, Adobe's build, and they say, okay, give us your code, we'll take care of it all. And then after that, first one's free, but then after that, it's not. It's not terribly expensive. And maybe if you're uh, maybe as you're making money off your app, you can afford it. And then getting rich 99 cents at a time. That's the big difference. Adobe's version basically, well, they want to monetize it. It's open source, and the license that it has allows that, so they want to monetize it. But whenever you look up any of the documentation, it's all cross-platform. Whenever you see anything that says phone gap plug-in ad camera, it works the same with Taco plug-in ad camera. It's just going to be a different dialect, so to speak, of the same basic tools. And Adobe will also have some tech support that you pay for to get more help. Whereas for us, when we are on our own like this, we're on our own. That's what I'm saying. It's not exactly super difficult, but it's complicated. We have to keep more into account and deal with more on our own. Let's go to one more address. Let's go to taco.tools. Yes, there is a .tools address. There's not just .coms, .nets, and such. There's .tools. There's a bunch of new .whatevers. There's .tools, there's .cool, there's .xyz. There's a lot of them. Taco.tools. Tools for Apache Cordova. Taco. Designed for Cordova developers by Cordova committers. It's another open source project, meaning people are contributing to it, making it better. It's not one monolithic company that's behind all the, all the basic code. Keep a healthy dev environment, speed up your dev, and automate your deployment on the cloud. Works with Ionic, PhoneGap, and all Cordova-based projects. That's what we're using. We're using Taco's dialect of Cordova. So our commands are going to be taco ad platform instead of phone gap ad platform. We use taco ad plugin instead of Cordova ad plugin. It's all equivalent. And the big reason why we're working with taco is if we poke around on the documentation of get started with Cordova, it's going to tell us, well, you need to install Node.js. You need to follow your platform specific guide. Basically, the Cordova way will have you install um, Cordova, uh, Node, and then Cordova, and Java, and the Android development environment. We have to install four big software if we go the Cordova method. If we go the Taco method, we install something called Node, a couple commands, and it all does it for us. For you that you're going to dive headfirst into the latest way to do it, it's not so much of a big deal. But for me, that I've been doing this for a few years, I've seen the old way, the bad old days of this. I've seen that you have to download the software, set it up, set your path, your environment variable is wrong, why isn't it working? I have to re-download it, I've got the wrong version. Taco, it's all bundled together, basically install Taco, that looks familiar, Taco Ad Platform, install Rex Android, etc we're going to see that Taco just lets us do things a lot faster. Whereas traditional Cordova, you have a lot of things that you need to set up before you can get running. PhoneGap, Taco, and Cordova basically run best with this command prompt typing some commands. But Taco is a way that will help us do it faster. And we're going to see it's not going to be that complicated to be in this command prompt. But I've been always continually researching on ways to make this easier to teach and for students to succeed with this. 
Um, and so, one more. Taco.visualstudio.com Visual Studio. Who makes Visual Studio? Company. Microsoft. Microsoft makes Visual Studio. Microsoft has a reputation of being a proprietary software business for 40 years. Very recently, it seems that they're really giving open source a shot. A lot of us might have been weary, but we're seeing that it seems that they're serious. Because there's a version of Visual Studio that they've put out now, totally free, for small developers. There's the classic Visual Studio that costs $2,000, yes, and the educational version that costs $900, but there is a version now that is completely free and focused on cross-platform. So here is something you can look at and look at later using Visual Studio. Okay, I don't want to use that command prompt. It's weird and scary. I want to use a nice, pretty interface. We have v Visual Studio that we can use with Taco built in. I've been using it too to kind of learn as much as possible and I like it. It's very useful. The big problem with this is that it's like a 30 gigabyte download because it's full of so much stuff to be able to encompass so much and you know graphical software is always much more bloated. This whole Taco thing that we set up is only about one gigabyte. Only about one gigabyte. Whereas Xcode, that's like four gigabytes. Android Studio itself, that's another like three gigabytes. Visual Studio, because it's trying to do it all at once, that's like a 30 gigabyte download. Taco is less than one. Here's yet another thing. The thing I'm trying to say, if this sounds confusing, it is. Because no one has, no one has created an all-in-one solution yet. Honestly, though, I think Microsoft is the closest. Amazingly, of course, like I'm saying, Microsoft is this 40-year-old company that's all about you want Windows, we're going to lock you into Windows, Windows is great, get into Windows. Uh, but we are seeing that they are putting out a lot of this software out there for you to be able to put your apps everywhere uh, via Visual Studio, via Taco, Cordova. So there's a lot to be reading and understanding and such, and I've got handouts for you. But what we're going to do is we're going to take our first break in just a moment. I'm going to get some handouts for you, uh, and then we'll uh, start to see all of this starting to come together. Right now I'm just kind of throwing a lot of concepts at you. I'm going to start to have them coalesce in just a moment. Any other questions so, so far? Yes. Yes, with Visual Studio, traditionally it's going to be C Sharp, but you will be able to create apps with those web languages in Visual Studio. So let me put into... What's that? It uses Cordova, exactly, because it's open source. So everything we learn here will be pretty much transferable over to Visual Studio if you go that route. All right, if you, if you go to the network folder, I just added two items there. We're going to take a break. You can print them if you'd like during the break. We're going to talk about them together. Don't do any of the things here just yet. Again, some of these things are already done for us. No point in doing some things that are already done. But we're going to take our first break, so maybe you can print this out or look them over. After the break, we'll do... We'll talk about what the handouts mean and all of that, and we'll talk about what you do and don't need to do. It's 7.22. We'll be back at 7.32.